I think he's going to tell the dogs to rip me to shreds. And oh, I say, I, I swear to God, I'm, he's the color of a tomato. What do you think you learned from the fiasco around hiring the then Disney CFO to be your number two? Because you called it, at least back then, the lowest point of your life? Yeah, so I buy ITT, and now I've got this global conglomerate, $20 billion, and my, my, one of my best friends wants to come work with me. It was bad from the start, and then it got worse. There was a lot of things I could tell you, but I would, they would be harmful to him that I won't say. Even, even all these years later, it would Only be? Only 23 years later. You, I, <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you a, a hint. He didn't want to talk to our largest shareholder when he came on board. That was Fidelity. Mm -hmm. They own 10% of the company. It was worth $2 billion. And I personally knew all the portfolio managers at, at Fidelity. He wouldn't talk to them. Why? He said he wasn't ready. And I said, they understand that. They just want to meet you. They've got a $2 billion investment in us. And they like to meet you. You just tell them, just go talk to him. He said, I won't talk to them. So I was like flabbergasted. And then, and then um, I walk in his office uh, a week later. There's a guy on the couch sitting like me with a notepad. And I'm like, hmm, who's this? And he goes, it's a reporter. I said, reporter for who? He goes, the New York Times. I said, what are they doing here? He says, they're doing a story on me. I'm, Excuse me? <laughs> so they wrote a story, the king of hotels. He'd been on the job, I think, a week. <laughs> and, um, and right, they made it look like he was running the yeah. show, which I, I'm mm. sure um, if you're bothered now occasionally about press coverage, go back 20 25 well, years. Well, don't forget, I mean, like, I'm yeah. trying to figure out how to right. integrate three companies in three cities. Bo Sheridan's in Boston, Weston's in Seattle, Starwood Hotels is in Phoenix and, and, and Greenwich, and, and then ITT's in New York. So I've got a lot of work to do, and I don't have, there's no team. Like, it's just me. I got three HR directors, three IT directors, and I'm 38, and I've never done this before, and we're public, and I got to pay off $9 billion of debt. So I worry about paying debt service. What happens if the hotels in Egypt don't pay me? Like, I had nightmares about this. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to fail in the middle of the public market. That was probably the worst period of my, my career. Why? Because Fortune magazine wrote an article, Divorce Corporate Style, which Richard set up. And, um, and it, was, it was awful. It was awful. It was an awful article. It was completely factually wrong. I had a guy I was hiring for marketing. He got wind of the story. He said, you need to call this woman and tell her her byline is completely wrong. I called her, but she was unmovable. Patricia Sellers, I'll never forget it, the conversation. And, and she just had everything wrong, everything. It was a terrible piece of <laughs> journalism that wasn't journalism, it was just wrong. And, and it was devastating when it came out. I was, I was just, and on the back of that, I let Richard go that day. He said to me, I learned PR from Katzenberg, Eisner, and Ovitz, you don't know anything about PR. I didn't even know you could hire a PR firm. Like, it never occurred to me to have my own PR firm. I just thought I'd post numbers and be like this. I was just naive. And that's when you started taking more control of... Well, I also learned perception. in my career, I learned the hard way that perception is... Managing your perception is as important as reality. People perceive you differently than you think you're going to be perceived, and you have to manage your image. In Hollywood, they've made careers of having images that aren't the people. But in business, you have the same issues. I, there was another story written about me. They, there was a Business Week article, and... Um, I, they called me and they said, who should we talk to about working with you? These people have left. And I wasn't allowed to sort of clean house. You know, I, had, I didn't get to pick my team. The narrative became, he's difficult to work for. So if I ever let anyone go, they just said he was difficult to work for, even if they were incompetent. And, the, the, and everyone bought it. So with... with um, you said a, a weakness of yours uh, over the years has been not letting, yeah. uh, hanging on to people too long. Yeah. Why? I remember what it was like getting fired. But I, it's hard to fire people. Uh, I'm not good at it. And, and I, I, needed to, I needed to pick my team. I used to say that I knew that I had the right executive at Star Hotels when the pile of stuff on my desk disappeared. So when I had the right CFO, I had no more finance stuff on, on my desk. When I had the right marketing person, the pile of marketing stuff disappeared. When I wasn't worried about any of our legal issues, that pile disappeared. So that's how I judge my success. Is that, did my desk come clear? And, and uh, but you know, this, this was a tough period. The, the reason, so when selling ITT, I did call Steve Wynn, and he did offer $2.9 billion for the business. And I did go to Vegas myself and negotiated the sale of ITT with him. And that was an experience of a lifetime and a chapter in a book. And I sold it to Arthur Goldberg, not to Wynn, for $3 billion. I'm on the golf course, his golf course, Shadow Creek. 
he's arranged for dinner for me that night. My name is on a locker between Michael Jordan and George Bush. <laughs> and I, I'm like, and I get back to my hotel room at the Desert Inn, which we were keeping, and I was one of the assets of ITT. And I pick up the phone, and Steve Wynn screams at me at the top of his lungs that I, I'm screwing him, and they'll never work a day again in this country. He'll ruin my life, he'll ruin my name. What did I do to deserve this in my life? I don't own the company. I'm just a hired hand here, and I don't even have a banker. Do you still remember oh, that like conversation? yesterday. Really? Oh, like yesterday. And then I said, Steve, stay where you are, I'm coming to your office. So I leave the desert and I go to Bellagio. I go to an office the size of this kitchen, twice the size of the kitchen, and there's a billion dollars of art on the walls. And Steve's there with his two German shepherds. I think he's gonna tell the dogs to rip me to shreds. And oh, I say, I, I swear to God, I'm, he's the color of a tomato. And I say, I say, Steve, here's what we'll do. You can stay where you are at 2, 8, 25, and Goldberg's at 3 billion, and the board will turn it down because it's too big a gap, and we're a public company. I can't agree to sell you this. The board has to approve it. I said, come close. Go to 2925. He's at 3 billion. I'll recommend your deal because he'll retrade us. And maybe we'll get you the company for 2925 cash. I just want a clean deal. Or I'll pay you $25 million, and you pretend that you're here, and I'll go and negotiate the best deal I can with Goldberg. I had no authorization to offer him $25 million, by the way. <laughs> so I didn't care. I wanted to get out of Vegas with my name intact, and I couldn't wait to leave the company and go crawl in a hole. And um, in walks his, I guess he was the COO or president at the time, Bobby Baldwin. And he says, Steve, can I see you? And he, um, says, he whispers, and, he goes, and Steve looks at me, comes back, sits down, and says, I'll take the $25 million. And I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> he goes, well, we forgot the overhead. Our bid is like 2.5. I said, oh, thank God. Uh, I said, I'm going to get on a plane and go home. And, uh, but I, I leave. I, I, it's a funny story. I told, I've told her recently that, that I'm taking off from LA at Las Vegas International, and there's a car chasing us down the runway. Yeah. You know, and that, was, that was actually happening. True. Uh, true. The guy wanted me to sign it. He said, Steve wants, there was a banker, and he asked me to they stopped the plane on the side of the road, and he made, can you sign the $25 million payment? I went back to my room. I stayed at the W in New York. And Goldberg was staying up, uptown. I never saw him. I got him to increase his price to 3.2 billion because I knew he'd retrade us. And sure enough, he retraded us at the last minute because when stock collapsed and he was no longer really a competitor to him. And I got the 3 billion I wanted at the end of the day.